Okay, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Welcome. First, I want to thank Raxo and Kim and Gary for becoming members. How's everyone doing? Those of you that might be in California and might have had the day off, did you have a good long weekend? I got a lot done. I actually did. I'm very happy. Uh, Wick Central, welcome. Are you's nephew, Rod? One eyed Willie? Who else do we have? David and PF Dennis and Bill. How are folks? James and Derek and Reth. GJ. Keith and Little Brat. Hero. Daniel and Barry. Christian, Gideon, Andrew and Maddie and Steve. Michael. Whew. So we are not going to be doing a five hour Tuesday stream. I hope that never has to happen again. But if it does, I hope we have success like we did last time, eventually. Uh, Derek, thanks for being a member for 23 months. Wow. Hey, BA. Hey, Engineering Chaos, I got my long weekend. How are you? I'm good. I, I got a lot done. I'm happy. Hey, Fabrico, is that Shammy? Low Sink, Jose, Christian, Hoity, welcome. Shadell, Martin, how are folks? We are going to play around with Shaken Tune today. We're going to play around with Shaken Tune on this green V2 and do a print. So I'm hoping chill. Um, this is not 100% working right now, though. The clipper screen is broken, but I'm not going to worry about that on stream. Unless we have a ton of time, unless we get bored and we want to play with it. But <laughs> hey, thanks for being a member. A critical distance and Moussaka. Sham wow for the win. <laughs> Martin, Shadell, and Dark. Bearded Bucket. Hi, Steve. Just an FYI, I'm watching while writing code for my project. So if I send something weird in chat, I'm not spanning. I do that all the time. I, I, I'll I be I'll be chatting with someone on Discord, and then I'll switch back to Fusion 360, and I'll hit like D for dimension, but it'll, it'll get typed into Discord, and then it looks like I'm sitting there chatting forever. Uh, because I've entered something. I'm, Steve is typing something. Um, but, so if you ever see that from me, it's probably because we were chatting and then I switched over without actually switching uh, the window focus. <laughs> does the screen work at all? It does, it's a software issue. It, it probably has to do with the software updates. So, you started streaming at a great time. My mill is throwing a tantrum and now I have nothing to do the last two hours at work. Well, that's perfect. So this is V2. So I did a couple of things over between streams. I put the panels on, all the panels are on. Figured we didn't need to go take the time to do that on, on camera. Right now the screen is sitting here. It's flashing the log on. It's turning off and back on, off and back on. Something's broken. I tried to fix it last night. I made it a little worse. I got around that. I'll work on it later. So it's one of those belt tensions tools. It's very nice. I, yes, I am very happy with that RS or PF makes PF makes. I almost said rod. Um, I'm very happy with this and I'm going to, I'm using it. I've used this on a few different, um, um, things I've worked on lately. Hey Alvaro, hey Andrew, hey James. Looking forward to building a 352.4. Nice. Not Steve Brakes. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Welcome. Hey Elmas, Brent. So the so I put the panels on. Um, we had already done all of the the P or the umbilical stuff, although I did put the PTFE tube in place. So I put the PTFE tube in place. And if we switch around here, you'll see the, it's just hanging here. This is the outlet that I had modeled. Let's do a little bit closer here. There we go, that'll work. So, hey Dominic, just remember if you're gonna break it, break it good, break it real good. Well, we broke it real good last week. Fortunately, I had a lot of help to fix it. So this is our guide 
our filament path. There are, let's see, this, normally we would put our PTFE holder right there. Hey John, thank you for your strings. They have helped me immensely in building my Vuan and doing the upgrades. I'm glad to hear that, thank you. Um, and then you would run this, and that's not a bad path right there. It goes down a little bit and then into the, into the printer, or you could loop it around and do something like this and have a, a decent path as well. Um, something, something like that. It takes up a bit of space here, but I realized that this goes right here really easy. Are you going to have that on printables? Um, I'm glad you asked, Shammy. I'm glad you asked because for the first time in Steve Build's streaming history, I have stuff on GitHub before we stream it. Sound effects make everything better. Um, if we go here to my GitHub, we go to printer stuff. And we go to Voron Trident and 2 V2. We go here. This is this is those things. What? Exactly. So this is the PTFE rear inlet. This is the 45 degree inlet stuff, including step files. The caveat with the rear inlet is the PTFE path for this. It might be a good idea to run a four millimeter drill bit through it. Um, you do have two parts. Once, once you bolt these two together, there's a heat set in going in. Once you bolt those together, it's probably a good idea. You should bolt them together with something in there to make sure they're lined up, but you should run a, a drill bit through there. Um, I have a loose wire create mayhem with my electronics. Oops. There's a Z chain cover on GitHub too. No, that one I'm not quite ready for. I felt that this was pretty, pretty darn really close. Good enough. Um, the Z stuff, not quite. Um, and then I, I just thought this was already, I figured it'd be, it would be really funny to actually have something out there um, for stream time. <laughs> the motivations, right? We take motivation where we can get it. So um, drive a, run a drill bit or a reamer four millimeter through that just to make sure it's opened up and goes. It is printed at a 45 degree angle. So um, it is a little tight as it is. I could open it up. Um, the step file is there if you want to, but the inlet, the retainer, I did modify the retainer. Um, I'll talk about that here in a second. And the um, spool holder. You haven't seen the spool holder yet. I'm about to show you. So this is the, this is a modified Voron PTFE retainer it usually goes here. The reason I made this is because the old one was very dependent on print settings. If you're over extruding, you're not going to be able to fit the PTFE through. If you're under extruding, it's going to be too loose. So I've really become a fan of printed um, um, clamps lately, apparently. Um, actually, I've been doing that for years, but um, I applied that here. So it's a heat set here and an M3 by 12 in there. And then you can just adjust it from the top right through here. Then it's a regular M3 by eight on the back. This ends up being a little thin. It basically cracks as soon as you tighten it down. And you know, and this can also crack right here because that's pretty thin too. So I embiggened it. I gave it a little chunk all around. Oops, that side. I gave it a little chunk. So now this is a, a M3 by 12, still M3 by 12 or 16. I don't remember what it is. I think it's 12. So now I'm actually gonna move it around. I'm gonna install it right there. And this is gonna go right through there. And look at that path. It's like perfect. I hunted hard to find that mod. It's awesome. Everything of putting all your mods in one local place. <laughs> yes, all the time. Nuno, today's your birthday. Happy birthday. Let's say happy birthday, Nuno. 
Let me make sure I don't miss any questions that are asked um, before chat gets crazy. Um, happy birthday, you know. Okay. Um, this I'm putting here. It needs a heat set here. But see how I, I made that a whole lot thicker around where the heat set is. So I'm hoping it doesn't crack. Let's pull, let's, let's recycle this heat set. to recycle this heat set using the method I talked about. I put a stainless steel screw in it. Meow burner on Charlie White. Oh, <laughs> the ears. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so then this goes here at the base of the screw. I'm gonna warm this up a bit. And it actually cracks, so it'll probably come right out. But if you warm that up and then pull it out, it comes it comes out cleaner than any other method I've found. And the heat sets have such low thermal mass, and when when they're threaded into a uh, when the screw is threaded into there, by the time you get it out, it's not going to burn your fingers. I pull them right out, and I never get burned. So watching tonight with my kids. Jackson and Kendall. Hi, Jackson and Kendall. Jackson and Kendall, be sure to say hi to Nuno, or say hi to, happy birthday to Nuno. Work great? Awesome. I think it works best in, with a fatter soldering iron tip, so. <sighs> okay, so I have that, that. I'm going to take my heat set here and grab my press I needed them extrusions I need all oh, the green yeah I like the green it's really too late for me well thanks for being here nice I know it's late for a lot of the world I just merged the meow burner ears with the ERCFC of you main body for the ECAS and sensor wow have you ever looked at the one where you cut a hole in the top and it moves for a pivot? No. I don't like the, it in the middle. Any holes in here. Um, I don't know how it's going to behave at higher Z values. Everything worked great when the print, when the tool head's down, down low. I would say if it wouldn't work, work great for a trident, I'm probably not interested. Okay, I'm going to just put this guy in here real quick. Um, Kind of freehanding it, but still using this. There we go. Are they custom or can they be ordered? I think it would work best on a Trident. Going in through the middle here? I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I could be wrong. I could very well, I could very well be wrong. But okay, so then a a screw goes in through here and threads in. That's right. We got tornadoes um, warnings in parts of the country right now, huh? I hope everyone is good. Poity, you still good? I'll experiment then and find out. Yes, let me know. Because I, I, I do I do a lot of what I try or not based on what I think. Um, I, based on what I can um, picture in my mind of what the mechanics look like. And if, you know, if I can't, if I don't have a path where I think it'll work, I usually move on to a different design. Phoning it in. Well, be safe, Poity. Did you see the new Silval copy of the V2? Yeah. It's not an April Fool's joke. It's a real thing. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think I need that anymore, and I don't think I need that. So. 
this thing goes in here. Just get that there. And that is, I love the, I love the filament path. And this is actually going to work pretty well for where I put the printers. But you just tighten this down to where it doesn't, um, it doesn't easily move anymore. You don't want to crush it, but. <laughs> Jake, welcome. How are you? Wow, it's late for you too. I was born and raised in Tornado Alley, there to be respected, run away, and hide. Still want a boron delta that would work from top. Just ending the printing part for the stealth press filled fun. So I made a spool holder now. So I have the PTFE here. I made a spool holder that goes here. I modified the switch wire, did quite a bit of mods to it and it bolts right here. And I think it's gonna work well for me. Has that tube holder been released? Oh, I forgot, I was gonna paste a, I was gonna paste a link for folks. Here's all the stuff. I actually put it out there before stream. Okay, let me grab heat gun. I'm going to use the, the big one. Print 3D. Oh, what do we got here? Concrete tiles were up to 200 meters away. Wow. Nice. Thanks for gifted memberships. Okay, so the, the spool holder part itself is just um, switch wire. I put it out there in the repo, um, but it's just the exact switch wire piece. And then it gets a piece of PTFE that I am going to cut length there just gonna use one of these Goes in there, that snaps into there, so then it comes off real easy, but not too easy. And then I'm using hammer heads because it's easiest, but these can be kind of pre-populated. Oh, no, they can't be pre-populated. They can sort of, there we go, because there's some there's some feet here that kind of help keep it stable. Okay, that goes there. And this goes on. Love the switch wire spool holder. I use it whenever I need a spool holder for a project. Nice. Yeah, this little piece is really handy. And I've adapted this to a, a, an alternate switch wire holder. And um, now, to, to this. So now the idea is, let's just grab a spool of filament here. It goes on there and just feeds into right here so I can, I can do this a lot easier from the front. I think I'm gonna like that. And it's a really smooth path going in. I love this background music. I'm glad to hear, cause that's pretty much all I play this playlist, so. Anyway, I feel like that turned out pretty clean for something that I thought of yesterday and modeled up 
last night and this is the first print of this piece. So. <laughs> my name is, welcome. My name is. Have a good stream, everyone. See you, nice. Hey, pathetic Puma. How you feeling? You feeling better? I hope so. So I think really that 100%, I almost lost my balance because um, I stepped on a cord here. That 100% finishes the build. So let's check out some input shaper stuff. Pathetic. Hey, BLD. 0550. Okay. So screen not functioning, but the printer is working. So last stream, we ran into a problem where we could not install Shake and Tune with Buster, Raspberry Pi OS Buster, because the version of um, Python 3.8 or whatever that's required is not compatible with Buster. So we went through and updated to Bullseye and the OS upgrade went well, but it threw uh, Moonraker and Fluid for a loop. There you go, Jake. That is a common anomaly x-axis, x-extrusion. What do we... Shake and tune or shake tune? It says shake and tune. We'll go out there. We'll go out to the to the repo here in a second. Um, it might be shake and tune, ampersand. Anyway, we ran into a two hour troubleshooting block of getting it working again, and we managed to do it. There are some lingering impacts, but that seems to be mostly in clipper screen. Everything else seems to be working. So anyway, this is the, the setup there. So shaken, not stirred. <laughs> now, when we were done, because part of our thing was when I, before I started that, um, before I started that, I put up a poll. Are we going to run shaken tune today? And 75% still said that we were. So we had to run it. So we did run it. I, uh, we have the results out there. We'll pull them up here in a second. <laughs> been a while since I've been here. The hot end housings look like it was injection molded. It looks so good. Thanks. Green, gray, metal plates on top of Y extrusion only for aesthetics. These are um, titanium backers. They are um, counteracting the um, thermal expand, differing thermal expansion rates between the extrusion and the um, linear rail. And this having a plate bolted to the other side cancels that out. How much of an impact that has? I don't have these on most of my printers. So, okay, let's go back here and let's go to the shake and tune info. Um, clipping. I think it's Clipane. So Frix's Clipane, generic Clipper configuration. So if we start here, I have not installed Clipane. You don't, you don't need to for what we're doing. But if we go through here, we're talking about Clipane as a generic modular, highly customizable Clipper configuration for 3D printers. Um, designed to do a bunch of stuff, but what we're interested in is the shake and tune module, which should be, where was that? I thought I saw a link. Wasn't there a link here? Maybe it's on the main. Here we are. So let's go. I started at Clipane. Let's go to Clipane shake and tune. So what are they calling it? Shake and tune. There we are. And this is what we want. Maybe backers work, maybe not, but they definitely look awesome. These especially look awesome. If you wanted to revisit it on RPI Buster, I wonder if you could do a 
Conda environment to get Python 3.8 or whatever version you were needing? I don't know. I was told that it's just the OS isn't compatible with that version of Python. I don't know if there's a workaround. I, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so Shake and Tune module we installed. We went through these process, this process, and it gives us a bunch of macros and it auto processes all the graphs and drops them into a folder nice and neat, which is really cool. So we did all this and in the printer, if we go to the configuration, it creates a shake and tune results folder and we did belts and this is what we came up with. So, and I don't remember, I don't know if you're here still, Ref. There you are. No one to the second one down in Google. Yeah, I, I missed it, but we got there eventually. Um, I don't remember, did I actually make an adjustment here? And was this a, I have a hard time reading these and this is why I'm really glad that Ref is here. Um, but I don't know exactly how to read which belt to tighten here. And I need to, and then what I'm going to do just to make it easier on Rath because he's been really awesome with this stuff. I'm going to be pasting these into a chat with him so he can see the full res instead of looking at them through. Um, through the video. So the suggestion is to tighten up the B belt. Um, the 100 hertz thing could be the umbilical. Now, what I think we should do before we do that is I've kind of constrained the umbilical a little bit by um, putting two zip ties further towards the back um, to the PTFE. I think we should probably run it again and see what it looks like. Oh, I, I got out the tuner gat, the, the belt thing, and to check the, we could see it. Did we ever get a definitive value on GT3 tension value? I didn't. Um, that's right, we did, here. The, the idea is to tighten the B belt. Let's do this. Let me close this, and let's go back here, and we are going to home all. We'll just do this. We're gonna we're gonna get a we're gonna get a new reading with the with the belt thing. And the idea is to tighten um, B. But let's see what the readings are. Let's, and let me do a quick um, QGL just to make sure we're level. Did we? Do, do, do. Hey, Ethan. Welcome. Yeah, let's get a let's get a new reading. Oh, let me put myself into streaming mode too. Otherwise, you guys are gonna get spammed by notifications. Okay. Yeah, I'm reminded we we always home in QGL. QGL is important on V2s, especially. You gotcha. Went to check the Discord. Yeah, I get bugged when I watch a video and someone's left notifications on. I did. I never sped this up either. I should have sped it up. Howdy, Chris. I should have sped all this up. Everybody's trained to respond to that same notification, huh? How do you speed that up? In the config, there's a, under the quad gantry level um, section, it, it the, the, the speed between points is defined there. Here, while we're, while we're waiting for that to go through, we go to the config and let's go back. 
in our printer config. And if we search for quad, let's go through. So this is our, that's probe. Let's go to the next section with it there, quad gantry level. And if we go oh, way down here, there's a lot of extra stuff in here, but right now it's going 150 millimeters per second between points. It's moving 20 millimeters in Z. That doesn't need to go quite that far. Um, you promised it's Tuesday, what? Why is your QGL progging so far for the rear of the bed? Um, I have a shorter bed for one. Um, you can set the speed between points, but I really wish you could also set the probe speed. You can, you can set the probe speed for, but for like tap, you don't want to set it too fast. You're, you'll lose accuracy. Taco Tuesday, but, but Garrett ha has to be here. Garrett has to be here and it's during, and it's during giveaway time. Um, so if we change this and we're not going to change it drastically and I'm not going to actually say, uh, restart for this, um, we could adjust our, um, our horizontal move. 20 is probably a bit too much. Um, although you want to be careful because the V2 gantry will sag, but up in the probe section is when you would change where you would change your, your probing speed for that. And that's going to be not too far up here, right here. So your probe by probe speed is five. Um, and you want to keep that kind of low for tap. You're going to lose, um, accuracy as you speed it up. Anyway, I'm going to save this, but I'm not going to restart because I don't want to have to re, um, QGL. Let's go back and it, this sets up a bunch of macros here. So we're going to do the belt shaper calibration. We'll just use the defaults. So I'm going to close the doors because I want the, I want this to be, that to be closed. And we're just going to hit, hit belt shaper and then it's going to sit here and it's going to start shaking. It is taco Tuesday. I will during giveaway if Garrett's here, which reminded, reminds me pin post description. Um, polymaker filament giveaway, every stream. Have to be here. We do it at seven o'clock, which is an hour and a half from now. We do it two hours into the Tuesday streams, three hours into the Sunday streams. There's a tsunami warning for Japan and may extend to the West Coast of North America. Wow. I am at about sea level 10 to 15 above sea level where I, at my house right now. But I got a whole bunch of land between me and the sea. Okay, so that's that's burring. That is burr. What keyboard is that? Um, I use a Keychron K1 SE. I like it because it's compact. I don't like it because the function keys are far too close to the next row and I keep accidentally hitting them. Um, and the battery life is kind of poo. We are a port city because there's the uh, deep water channel that comes up through the bay all the way into West Sacramento, where I'm at. I realized how much I don't like the, the key spacing. Oops. On the, the, the function keys are right there. And every time I go to hit backspace, I often hit F11 or F12. And in a browser that either, go, either goes full screen or brings up the developer console thing. Oh, there's the next one. Hey, James. But other than that, I like the size of it. I mean, really, it's the... It doesn't take up a lot of space here. profile oh, key switch problems true true i got a i got a something else in i got a, a 
a black and red box. I have a black and red box with a, my first black ducky. It is quite different from the <laughs> from the regular duckies. The only Leviathan, or Leviathan, the only Kraken, Aquatic Monsters. Um, the only Kraken I have right now is a pre-production. Pre so I got one with the fancy red heat sink put on here for Rocky Mountain. So I have a little bling in the, in the compartment. Too bad that gets hidden. That's kind of cool. <laughs> How do you get the black duck? You order one of these, which is overkill for 99.9% .9 of printers out there. <laughs> Still, people are gonna put it on an ender. For a K3, it's perfect. There you go. But I'm not wrong, right? How many people are going to put that on an ender? Anyway, I got to get this on. On the Phoenix before I go. Should be a quick swap. I might just because he said it. The Kraken work for a Milo. Um, it is uh, rep rep firmware compatible. The pre-production version ones were not. They didn't have the right processor with the right amount of RAM, I guess. Oh. This one is so, this one's so pre-production that it doesn't have a heat sink. It has these monster JST VH connectors. You know, if it runs rip rap from where I may need it. <laughs> it the, the production one will run rep rep from where. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it would do Wi Fi on it. I'm not sure. I don't know if it has to run in SBC mode or. What have I done? <laughs> Could have been asked, but is there a purpose to that hex piece along the back gantry rail? Yes, the hex piece on the back gantry rail helps to keep the umbilical I'm using for Z, because notice it doesn't have a chain. Um, the umbilical for Z stays there. Uh, helps, helps keep it in place. Okay, that finished. And if we go into the graphs here, it says command shake and tune finished. So let's go over and look at the results. Belts, and this is today's result. That is significantly different. Let's copy the image over to my buddy here. Do you run belt shaper or run axis shaper calibrate? Okay, so now we're gonna run axis shaper calibrate. Let's go back here and axis shaper calibration. Then you can share the picture while input shaper runs. Cool. Let's go, and now let's go share the picture so we can talk about it. Um, you could probably use that, just need the port rep wrap, but it's an ass. Board possibility, those results are worse. B needs to be tightened. This is brand new belts. We are, we are, we, as we noticed, well, late in the stream yesterday, we noticed things, I think maybe it was an, on another, maybe I'm mixing up my printers I've been working on, but this is brand new belts. There could be some settling in. Um, I'm being told would check bounce on the front idlers. I don't know what that means. If you did let the smoke out, you'd get the Kraken. 
<laughs> Mechanical issue detected. That did not look good. For racking. Checking belt alignment, pulley alignment, or um, pulley height and belt alignment on the back pulleys looks good. Has the Kraken got an estimated price yet? It's released. It's fully. It's out there. You can you can look it up. I think it's a uh, hundred and nine dollars usually. It's U.S. So I'm being told, give it a half a turn on B. And so we're gonna give a half a turn over here, but this is running, this is running the input shaper right now. So I gotta let it finish. This is what a lot of the stream is going to be, is running these, making an adjustment and running it again. And that's just, that's just what it is. I think that's done. So this was belt shaper. You want A and B to be the same shape graphs. They're not likely to be exactly the same amplitude, but the peak should line up on the same frequencies. Input shaper is like baseball. It's a hurry up and wait game. Let's go back here. Is this processing? Oh, now it's running the next one. So I can't do anything yet. Before I actually adjust B, once this is done, we're gonna move the tool head back a little bit. And we're gonna see if we see a, um, a difference in tension on the meter. Hundred nineteen is the Kraken retail. You can look at X while Y is running. Can you? So X is done. So let's go back and go to input shaper. Hey, there's X. Let's see what X looks like. We got some stuff there. What do you, what do we think that is? Here, let me copy this for you. You need to fix belts first. That is all junk. Okay. So we can't really act on this because we know that our belts are off. What's your opinion? Kraken or Leviathan for a Trident build? Between those two, Leviathan, 100%. Um, unless you can use the ex the extra IO or current stepper current capacity of the Kraken. That's when Kraken shines, is when you need that. They're NEMA 23s on the, on the Phoenix here. Mirror's last results. You have fan running in the hot end? Nope. No fans. There's a controller fan running on the printer. Oh, yep, I just hit it. I probably just impacted the results. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey, Jack and Jack. Smidoo. Hello. I'm back to printing parts for my 2.4 LDO kit from two years ago. Wow. Okay, so that one just finished. So let's go back to, you, know, you want peaks even if you have to choose, you're correct. You want frequency the same rather than amplitude. So we talk about the idea of, and Reth likes to talk about this, of chasing unicorns with input shaper and absolutely correct. Um, chasing unicorns, the idea of trying to get it perfect when perfect isn't necessarily going to show an inc a significant increase in print quality over close to perfect or somewhat great. So I've talked about, I kind of want to chase unicorns um, in the interest of learning and trying with the knowledge that it's not going to make a big difference, but knowing what the changes do in that, in that um, endeavor and that quest, I think is is useful. But keeping the idea that it's not going to be perfect and it's okay. 
You need to set the axis map for the ADXL axis. Um, I think you get useful results if you want all the all the colors and stuff to line up correctly, probably. But um, okay, that is done processing. Let's look at Y real quick since it's since it's done. And this is Y. But we know that these these results are going to change quite a bit when we when we redo the belt. So I'm gonna give a quick look at that and then. I guess I'll throw this over to over here just for consistency sake. We get a before, we get all the before info. And then let's go back here and move the tool head back a little bit. Uh, let's go Y. There we go. So now I'm gonna get in here and use my meter and I wanna see we'll do this although this is going to be tough to get a good um i had an idea maybe no maybe Let me try something i'm gonna try to get that light I'm blocking light but that should there we go At least we can see past the glare. Okay. Oops, I gotta take this off. Just over 2.4. Just barely. Oops, you can't see that. There we go. <laughs> Right there, I mean, really right at 2.4. Printer needs an umbrella. I mean, they're, they're both right at 2.4 on here. This one might be just a hair over, but not by, oops. Er. Not by a lot. Are we saying that, and the advice was, check the belt first, reminder, recheck belt tension with PF mix tool. Do you have a fan running? All right, baseline before any adjustments, thank you. So half a turn tighter on B. Hey Josh. Let's go right there. Let's see how that, just from a, I know we need to move the gantry around, but I wanna see what this ends up looking like. I print one of those meters after seeing you use one on the entire stream, super useful. Even if just to do a comparison, it's like 2.6 now. That's a 2.5. 2. I didn't equalize. I didn't move the gantry around. Um, let's do a home all and run the belt shaper again. I'm going to move this back and forth just so I don't kill my lighting here. It's back. And we're gonna do belt shaper and see what it looks like. Hmm. Did you derack at some point in the build? Yeah. Yeah, it's it should be. I can I can loosen everything up and do it again if I need to. Um, if I'm looking at the idlers, I am very close to an even gap on both of them, which tells me that my belts is I, I'm not going to be very far out of rack. I think my belts are the same length. Um,
Yeah, I'm definitely not enough. You, you see the difference in the gap there when you're a tooth off. Filament tensioner, this is a Galileo 2. So there's no, there's no thing to close there. I'd like to see proper way to derack. Do you think the extrusion backing plates have a significant impact? I don't think there's a significant impact. There's probably a technical impact. I don't think it's significant. But aesthetic impact is gigantic. Look at those. They pretty much match. In, as you change the angle of light on them, you definitely get this exact hue, depending on how what angle you're looking at. Would the filament and the Bowden make a difference? Um, I don't have any filament in there right now. Stripes make the car go faster. Mm -hmm. These these were made by by Wapping Puckard um, himself, so I got I got them directly from from John. Looking at felt paths. Alignment. These look pretty good. Don't see anything riding up on anything. Filament. It will generally keep the idler gear and the extruder from vibrating. This is a bearing. This is a, this doesn't have like a BMG idler. It's, there's just a bearing there. So it doesn't, it's got seals on it. It's got, I think it even has rubber seals on it. I don't think it's vibrating. Hey zombie, this is the last stream in this series. And for, um, Samo, you can get this at West3D, West3D.com. There goes there. The 3D logo there. There is not 3D or filament in the tool head. There is not. There's something at that very high frequency. I heard something in the printer started rattling. Hey, Andre. I didn't link to it. Um, we can, is this going to the next, next one? I did it finish. Oh, where are we at? Running command. I love the use of Prusa plates. Could use bamboo plates too. I like the Prusa plates. That's my favorite. Okay, it's running, it's cleaning. It says it's finished. So let's check it out. Go down here. This is what's really, um, really nice is that it copies it here for you. So this is the 50 by 53 my time. Let's look at it. So what do we have here? So those are quite off, huh? They sold out of the assembled tensioner. Didn't want to remember which Drew Steam started building a Galileo 2. I had a um, dedicated stream to that, didn't I? Let me copy this over for you. If you think that I should double check the racking, I'm willing to do that.
Likely a mechanical issue in the experimental little section down there. There's no mechanical issue. I don't, I don't believe it. It's all wrong. Tight. The camel. Can you run, run input shaper and see the graph? It can be wrong. Should we run the, I think that's probably correct to run that next. So let's do the shaper calibration. I'm in denial. <laughs> Let's see what this looks like. The issue with Steve's graphs is that A and B belt are not lining up. So it sounds like I should go through, loosen, loosen it. Loosen all the the relevant parts and make sure we are not out of whack. We can do that. I think we should. Let's let this run, see what it looks like. PF Dennis, thanks for the gift of memberships. You run input shaper, it will show if something is wrong on another axis, at least to give you direction. It looks terrible, Bob. Really terrible. <laughs> we try to loosen A and B belt and redo the tension, giving each belt a half, half a turn switching back and forth. I'm going to loosen it all the way. I'm going to run it to the back of the gantry and feel with it loose if it seems to be lined up. Stop at two on the belt meter. Okay. It is sort of an X gen input shaper script. Yep. How's debugging will go? I had similar issues in my graphs. So we went through my blue V2. So I ran ran the, the stuff and it came out terrible. And I went through and I was planning on putting a can tool headboard on it and all that. So I went through, I didn't do any real fine adjustments on the gantry. I went through and tightened every bolt and some of them were very loose. And I changed, I ran, I still ran chains. I ran the, the wire for the can tool headboard through chains, but I shortened the chains and I just kind of cleaned everything up pretty well. Made sure everything was tight, make, made sure that the, the gantry wasn't racked and went through and got a marked improvement in the graphs um, after going through that. Share X input shaper. Oh yeah. So Y just finished. So let's go in and look at input shaper X. So it's still doing. Oh. <sighs> Oh, where did, oh yeah. Z belts, we checked that um, when we were playing around with the tensioner last week. Zoom in too. So they're going to be very close. 
How does using the Nylock hit ADXL compared to an ADXL on the SB mount, which is closer to the nozzle? Um, I don't know. I don't know what impact you see. Um, let's go back here. I guess there's not really much to see there. Let's just look at pretty red lights. Your Z belts are what is wrong with that? Really? What tells you what 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 makes you think? And, and I, I I'm I'm not doubting it. Not doubting it at all. Um, belt tension adjustment not input shaper with guitar tuner. Your Z is vibrating all over your X axis. Let's do AB, AB belt tension first. Okay, that's my recommendation here. Well, it says the blue line is Z, but it's not necessarily mapped correctly, right? So it, these don't necessarily add up to, oops, sorry. These don't necessarily add, are not necessarily labeled correctly. These things. So, because the mapping probably isn't correct. How do we fix the mapping? Uh, let's look at Y. Let's see what Y came up with. And there's our, there's our Y. Because this X, is X shape or the highest peak is X. That means blue is X. Oh, weird, I've never seen mapping incorrect before that I noticed. It says Z, you can't go by that. Yeah. If I change the <laughs> magic marker would fix the mapping. If we change the, where is it? Do I have a different file for here? There is, oh, there's a different value you can put in here that has the, the coordinates mapping. X axis map calibration. Yeah. I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's go, let's loosen everything up. Oh, before I do that, I want to move the gantry up so I can get to bolts easier. So let's go up. We're just going to loosen these all the way. It's nice and loose. And then I'm going to turn motors off. Um, yeah. And I think I'm going to pull these. I'll pull just the idlers. It doesn't matter as far as I know, I'm going to test one axis at a time. Just know the total is in line you want to see, especially if you're measuring total isn't lined up 90 degrees. So I'm gonna pull these, that way I'm 100% loose. This is just the idlers and they're really easy to get back in. Okay, where'd that go? Rolled somewhere, there it is. <laughs> that one on that side, this one on this side. Now this is loose. Move this to the back <laughs> as we figure out. There we are. Okay. There's a little bit on this side, little bit. So try this by loosening these guys this is gonna just gonna have to get in the way here because these this machine gantry i think is going to be pretty much in line so i'm gonna try it by loosening the g2 will rattle if empty Okay, I'll throw a piece of filament in there, but 
let's try this first. Loosen both sides. Moving idler is so much easier than I'm doing the belt. You just gotta kind of deal with floppy belts for a little bit. Get it, make sure they're you're not bind, uh, bunching up in the back and they're getting in the way. Okay. So now I'm just gonna hold this. Oh, this tries to stay somewhat level, but hold this against the back. It is getting warm. Oh, I touched the stepper. The steppers are getting somewhat warm. Okay, so I'll hold this. Jeez. Both sides. Armor. Sag, stupid sagging B2. Yep, that's, there's no racking. Awesome, Armor 3D. Um, that's something that is new, apparently. YouTube, if you are subscribed, so make sure you're subscribed. It's important to be subscribed. The, um, you can get a gifted membership and not even be watching the stream. Those motors might need more Excel per Hertz. Default is only 75. Clipper command to just kill. Good stepper. Yeah. I should have done that. I'm just making sure this stays. Okay. We're good. So now, bring this forward and this comes back around. Make sure all our belts are still lined up on the on the bearing stacks and pulleys which they are not right now there we go this i'm already subscribed that's why you got a membership while you weren't here that's what i'm saying you're subscribed which means you got a mem a membership a gifted membership and weren't even here That goes through easily. I'll try right back on there. Just make sure I, I went through and Loctited all of these, so they should be tight, and they are. No, um, the screen is broken right now. Clipper, Clipper screen is broken. That's there. This comes up there. Now I've got, I might have belts not necessarily on the right track in the back, and that's going to be important. So we, we may have to pull the back panel real quick just to make sure everything, because we completely loosened all the belts. So Clipper. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. I'll look down in the here, make sure we're on the, if, if a belt is riding up or, or riding on the edge of a bearing stack, it's going to impact your ability to evenly tighten the system. So it's worth it to take the time to pull this back panel. And check. 
don't know why I did that. I didn't need to completely remove it. It's a Tina. Uh, it's a hammerhead. It's still prompt. <laughs> hey, Daniel, welcome. Hey, Obi Wan. Hello there. This autoplay. I thought it was an old video I was listening to while I stepped out to check my printer. Got a push. Nice. Time for some snap clips. I like these. I put um, Loctite on them and it makes hammerheads work way better. Okay, so these are all okay. Everything's routed properly. I'm not screwing anything up. The belt alignment on the pulleys is good. It's not touching on either side. I'm gonna leave this off for a moment while we tighten this up. Hey Jake, Are we working on shoot on 2.4. Okay, so we're going to put that right there, and we are going to tighten this until it's touching there, and there, and then we're just going to tighten a little bit at a time. We're going to test it. Oh yeah, we need we need 200 likes by 40 48 minutes from now. Okay, so I'm going to run that through there. Now you're supposed to have your your belts engaged, and it should be you need to be QGL. So let's do that. Let's home it and QGL it. Um, everything's good. Belts are tight enough now to home. the SB2209, you think? Are you talking about the tool headboard on this? We're using the um, Leviathan or the LDO Nighthawk USB tool headboard. And QGL. So I just got it barely, I, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't even read two on the on the meters right now. SB boards can be a little finicky. Oh, it's rude. Oh, you're, you're troubleshooting a problem there. Got it. I haven't restarted it yet. So the faster homing speeds are not applied. I'm a little afraid to restart it, to be honest, because of the problems I've been having. <laughs> I ran all the 22 gauge wires in the Voron instruction said 20 gauge for the heater. Do you know what wire size will be okay? What heater are you using? It's all dependent on what, what hot end you're, you're using, what heater. Quick diversion, but what model number is the J Reader J Reedy ejector tool? If you go to the um, link in the description, that is my Amazon affiliate affiliate store. Um, the, I do have that in my affiliate store, the J Ready ejector tool. And if you order it from there, it doesn't cost you anything different. I get a little tiny percentage, itty bitty percentage from Amazon. <laughs> Hmm. 
<sighs> What's your opinion on the new Soval SV08? It just got teased. Looks like a 2.4 clone. I have, I know nothing about it. I know nothing about it. I know that it, it's supposed to look like a 2.4. Um, let's get this back home. It's not an April Fool's, I'll tell you that. It's not an April Fool's. Okay, let's go back a little bit. And see what our belt measurements are. Oops, I keep I put I keep leaving the little calibration pin on there, but I don't want to lose it either, so I just need to remember to pull that off. Oh. I'm at like 1.92. I do not have an SVO8 in the other garage. The Magneto is pretty much, and that one's at 1.7. 1. 1. So let's tighten this one up. There, play with it. Do not worry about B. Yeah, we're gonna test this one. That one is right there at two. Yep. So they're they're both measuring really close to the same right now. Let's home it. Oh, Reth, I just read your message. I basically did what you said. Get A to match B. You like that belt tool better than checking frequency? Oh, I don't like the frequency method at all. Does the kit come with multiple needles? I got the parts and I'm gonna print mine. Just want to make sure I print the right needles. Um, it, I don't know. I bought this pre-assembled. So it's already set up with this 1.9 calibration needle. Um, well, and now I just dropped it, so I don't know if it's still calibrated. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that impacts it either. Um, oh, I'm gonna see what the value is, but I want to next put that back panel back on and run the thing. What? Oh, I hit the wrong. I hit the wrong button. Someone tell Steve what? I believe instructions call for this measurement to be done with motors engaged. Not sure. They were engaged. They're, and it does call for them to be engaged. That's right at two. That's actually a little above two, but we'll see if that shows in the belt shaper tuning. Let's put the back panel back on. Otherwise, we're not going to get the same type results anyway. Everything is still nice and lined up as it should be. correctly i i honestly don't know the whole process for setting and tuning that i mean i just like i said i i thought it looked neat i ordered one when i was placing another order with west 3d and i didn't use it for a long time until this series and this was my excuse to learn about it
I know you've said it before already, you source your extrusions. I love the, really like that. This is LDO. This is a self-source. This is before kits were a thing. Um, but LDO was selling individual component sets and stuff like rails and stuff. So. <sighs> Okay, so now we're gonna run belt shape, belt, belt shaper, belt shaper calibration. Yeah, belt shaper. This is so Peter, Peter Graf. We're using a plugin called Shake and Tune um, by Frix. It's here. Uh, it, it has a lot of neat little functions and will um, produce the graphs and stuff. Use a guitar tuning app and put a microphone of the phone as close to the belt and plucking as possible. I'm not getting any. I've never gotten any consistency out of that. Um, Reth, um, I did hear a vibration at the very top, very almost when it was almost done. I heard a vibration coming from somewhere. I'll try to pay attention. It was right at the height. There was one right there. It's just like a regular ADXL, or does it have some advantage? This is just built into the Nighthawk, the one we're using. Now, I was planning on getting, setting up an external one on the tool head. I didn't get to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna display the thing. It's going to be sitting. Oops. There. If I notice a noise, I'll call it out. There's one, and then gone. Remember, we keep seeing that 100 hertz one, right? Was that when it was, or was that something else? There's one right there, right around 100 hertz. That's the only one I heard. Oh. 
Okay, it's gonna run this. I don't know what Graf says when we need to look at the B belt and the motion system associated with it. Okay, it's still running. Shake tune, running command, shake tune. Okay, I think that's done at that point. So let's go look. Belts. This is the 1825 one. What do we have here? Much more in line. Better. Give you a give you a better view here. It's funny we hear the frequency when the noise filter gradually cuts in. Really? Interesting. We did see that A was testing slightly tighter than B on the meter. Is that showing here? And how do we tell that? I want to keep loosen A. We're at that weird place where we need to test one belt to see its effect. Okay, so let's loosen A by what? Like a sixteenth of a turn, probably. Let's go a little bit more then. It's a quarter of a turn. Let's do that. And then let's home it. Home all to equalize the belts. The mellow parts on mine, can is still finicky. The filament we're gonna print in today is going to be purple. Um, let's put this on here. Wow, that's fun. Figure that out. used to this. Just do this. There we go. That's loaded. Um, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing, we're doing belt shaper again. So we're doing belt shaper again. Now this shouldn't, putting that filament in it will, might do some, have some effect on the exact shape, but it shouldn't change the, the um, tension um, stuff, right? We should still see similar or some impact on the tensioning. Yeah. But if that idler gear in there is doing something, then this might clean it up. On the smooth idlers on the X-beam is the washer between the two bearings. Um, I don't remember, Aaron. You might have to unplug the fans underneath. Maybe the fan is the purple vertical line in the previous X and Y shaper graphs. Okay. I do have a controller fan. And it is making noise. It's not in the best shape. 
the fan on underneath is is probably could be replaced. I might be able to get a good view at that, um, Aaron, with the tool head moved out of the way, but. Oh, I mean, let's just look at the, look at the printer instead of a screen just hitting stuff. Hey Chris, welcome. V Tuesday, that's a good one. I like it. It's V Tuesday. I'm surprised the first time he realized he was hearing the harmonic distortion between individual strings when tuning. Bust out the 240RC and drive it while we wait. <laughs> uh, I put the battery, I, I discharged the battery down to storage capacity already. I'd have to charge it. I'll have it at Rocky Mountain. Oh, there's a vibration. It's at, right at there at 98. That's what I, I can hear it. And it's gone by like 100. We are 28 minutes from giveaway time, 67 likes away, and 257 people here. Got to get to 200 likes by giveaway time. 17 days before you leave for Rocky Mountain? Yeah. Don't remind me. Although this weekend, for some reason, my brain convinced me that I only had 10 days left. I, I knocked a whole week off of my off of my prep time and it had me stressed. Okay, it's running it. Running command shake tune. Acceptable. So this is improved because it says acceptable mechanical health now. <laughs> okay, finished. And this is the current one. Oh, we looking better here? Here, let me copy this over. I think your printer likes Y X on hundred Y seventy five is the main peaks. This is the case it would mean that all the junk in on X between is binding better. What do we think? Must encourage to attempt SLA printed stealth burner. That hundred hertz resonance could be the motors. Try sixty four micro steps. Okay, it's time to run input shapers. What I'm hearing. That's what Reth is saying. I'm listening to Reth. Let's run Input Shaper. Axis Shaper. Hey, Steven. We are we are sitting here and <laughs> we are sitting here and waiting in between uh, um, Input Shaper results. I have a smaller printer than a 350. It is. It's a hundred smaller than 350. <laughs> and there's a purple vertical line in the previous X and Y input shaper graphs. Hey Arthur, happy Tuesday. V Tuesday, apparently. 
means that like a V0, your axis peaks are going to be higher than a 350. Okay, that makes sense. Peaks at least are lining up now. Yeah. So if anybody in here that's watching right now saw the the graphs that Rath posted last week, those were mine. Those were from my blue V2. So a little a disclosure there. <laughs> it's Tunes Day. There we go. Is your Excel mounted in the traditional stealth burner location? No, it's on the tool headboard. Oh, there was one. Yep, right there at the 98. 98 hertz is when I hear that. And that's something we could we could run. There's a value a, a function in here where we can run that at 98 hertz and I could identify exactly where that is. I think it's a panel somewhere. It really sounds like a panel back here. But I can't be sure. Using SKR Mini 3D2, switching to Dragon Burr. Okay. So we'll be able to look at X here in a second. It might be. We can we can run a function in here. 100 is the natural resonance of your machine, so it's okay that it's slapping a real way to get rid of it. Okay. Um, let's look at, oh, is it? Oh, okay, it's gonna start Y here in a second, I think. Let's let it, let's let it finish running that. Oh, there we are. Now it's doing Y, so let's go look at X. Input shaper X. Still have that early peak. Let me, let me copy this over. Moving VHB tape sucks. Yes, it does. Going to see the Empire's... Oh, <laughs> in Vegas. Early peak is likely binding. Binding where? What do you think... What do you think might be binding? You know, did I ever take apart the front idlers on this rebuild? I don't think I ever took them apart and cleaned them or checked the bearings. Could be anything between the XY joints. Huh. This is where you would excite at frequency macro and hit with 25 Hertz. Oh, okay. You'll be able to hear something. Okay. It's going to be in SAC at the Colonial Theater next month. Oh. Toolhead and XBXL, not really the best for accurate results. It's fine for this, though. It's fine for what we're doing. Time 45. Okay, we'll do that next. We'll run this, excite the, the x-axis at 25 hertz. Then we do it again at 72. Is that what we would do next? Do it at 72 and see what happens. 73, looks like 72, maybe. Okay, I think that's running. Let's see what Y looks like. Beth is thinking 72 might get cleaned up when the 25 cleans up. Hey, Carlos. Is PSD magnitude small a good thing? Okay, there's the there's the CSV file. Let's wait for the PNG file to show up. This stuff is I'm I'm just I don't understand it yet, so I, I rely on on help here.
Definitely looks like a funny show and a good time. Oh, he's still talking about the Empire Strips Back. Butterfly effect, massive quake in Taiwan. There's a massive quake in Taiwan right now. Oh, the, the, we were talking about a tsunami earlier, huh? Hey, Maker Dave. Let me copy this and paste it here. Breath, I want to say I really appreciate this being around and giving me some notes here. This definitely we're gonna try the chemicals, starting fluid. Okay, so that is that. Peaks three to four are likely my umbilical. Okay. Let's run the excite thing. So you can see the Z red in it. So this is this is a Z motion from the red, which is labeled as X, but this is because I don't have the uh, the X axis calibration correct. When you compare two different plots, make sure you take into account the overall magnitude marked above Y axis of the plot. Smaller means less energy in those peaks. Earthquake watch is Taiwan at 7.9. Okay, so there is a function in here that I haven't used yet, but it is, is this the, where is it? Excite axis at frequency. So we are going to excite at 25. Um, we are going to do this for 45 seconds and it is going to be the X axis. And hopefully I will be able to see or hear what is causing it. So let's set. And what am I, am I? What am I listening for? What am I? trying to find how am I trying to find it get rid of the quotations in the X that doesn't have to that doesn't have to be there don't use okay I'm not detecting any difference See you one eye, Willie. It is vibrating. Oh yeah, it is. But I can't really tell. And I can hear something. Let's run this again. so much and don't even know it <laughs> Joshua I just keep sending this I'm trying to this is the game vibrate look and listen and feel around I was doing the same thing recently so hard to find the cause. Screen boot looping, yeah. on the XY joints and tool head. I know, but I felt something back here. Hmm. 
not really not riding on the flanges. Can you be able to tell if tap is vibrating? I would think that it would change when I move it and it's not. There's no change when I when I lift or lower the tool head. Maybe a mechanic stethoscope would help, maybe. can't really tell. I can't really tell where that's coming from. I don't think it was this. I'm going to put this back on. New wires running down the extrusions, touching the belts in the back around the motor mounts. Sure, all of this is tight. Yeah. screwdriver works too. Again, an Allen wrench against belt against various idlers and gears. Front idlers, you don't think you cleaned and redid? I did not. I did not, but I can't, I, it feels like it's either here or back in terms of just like when I stuck my head in there. We run this again. Oops. If you have something like a rubber hose about three feet long, you can use that as a stethoscope. I don't. Nothing changes when I do the, when I mess around with the tool head. It's not in the tool head. If I flex this around, <laughs> projects. I can hear something. I just can't tell where it's coming from. Could it be underneath the printer and the electronics causing it? Is 
Thanks, Maddox. Try loosening the screws for the tooth idlers and bearings. just a bit. Yeah, that didn't, I didn't change it. It really sounds like it's at the back of the printer. Check screws into the Y linear rail, the four screws that secure the axis. These under here, I tightened those when I um, made sure it wasn't racked. Oh, here's something. Probably the bottom panel. Nope. It's not that. Put pressure on it. Yeah, that's what I was just doing, Maker Dave. Good. Doing that before I heard. bottom panel you should just take that off and throw it away Feeling a drive back there. Run X shaper only and look at the X Y joints as it runs its test. How do I do that? Fasteners tight on the exhaust port on the back of the printer. They are. I mean, I can double check, but. Tight. Oh, I wonder. Here, let me run this again real quick. I was just seeing if it was my LEDs up here. Hey, Dave. Nope, none of that. So what was the suggestion, Russ? Or... Um, yeah, the... Oh, can't really get to them, but yes, these, these are all tight. for the X rail is all tight and those are all tight and I know they're Loctited spool mounted up high that doesn't matter when I was touching it it didn't make any impact on the frequency this should be X the rear rear left should be X but the B motor only whereas X uses both the B and A motor move in the X direction it's annoying so what was the other suggestion there, Rath? X shaper only, okay. So 
Let's go axes and we'll say X and send. Oh, that's a good question on the bed real quick. Oh, the front that one was not. There was one that was not, but I was not hearing it from here, from the front. I thought it was at the three hour mark. It is at the four minutes from now mark. Okay, let's send that. We're gonna run just X Shaper. There was a loose screw on the bed, but it was in the front. Bring out the details of steel tap. It won't be light. I learned any steel was denser, but I didn't appreciate how much. Yeah. I'm an echo chamber. You don't want all this to do all this without the panels, but the panels matter. Oh. At this frequency, I'm not seeing anything. I should have been looking at the, sh the lower frequencies. I also feel like I need to turn off those fans. That, oh, that was a little lower than 98 Hertz that time. I heard it back here in the, in the back left corner. See ya, Mike. As you print real slow, the low frequency won't matter. It's still interesting to see. Two more minutes till Polymaker filming giveaway time. We need 27 likes though. We need 27 likes, folks. In two minutes, we can get 27 likes, right? Two minutes, 27 likes, go. <laughs> Let's look at this. Why does that say why? Oh, because I'm not, no, I'm an in input shaper. Why don't I get an X? 59. Oh, is it still processing? It must still be processing. And 58, it should have been done processing. Input shaper, refresh. Shouldn't I see it there? Where are we at? Four more. We got four more in one minute. Binding on the belts, which means your motion system is not running smoothly. It also has a nasty habit of throwing off the input shaper recommendations. Why am I not seeing that result? Sure to click the like button twice. Do it three times, Sean. <laughs> now oh, there we go. 202. We're good. We can do a giveaway. 
Garrett here? I think he said he couldn't be here. Where's, uh, do I have a way to get to this thing? Get a real, a real view. Dude, dude, dude. Let's see if I can get to it from here. Oh no, I might've screwed it up. Oh, I might I might not be able to get to it at all now. It's way up there in a shelf that I can't actually get to with my desk here in the way. So this is the only way. And if I knock over my overhead camera, then we're really screwed. Oh, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it might not be possible. You try, I'm trying for the taco hat. I know. Hey, 3D. Trying for the taco hat. But my my setup here prevents access to the spot where I where I tucked it. Let's see, now it's now I've got a mission. Oh, oh, oh. Progress, progress. I fished for a hat and I got one. <laughs> okay, now I gotta make sure there's not a black widow in it because there have been baby black widows coming down on, on uh, webbing. Like there's one right there. Harbor Freight grabber things. I can print one. Make sure I'm not gonna get, get no spider in my head. There we go. I'll stop the count. Start the counter for me. There we go. <laughs> um. Okay. Polymaker filament giveaway time. Now you only get a small view of the taco hat. <laughs> A wheel of names. Oh, come on. Open. Um, open from the cloud. What? <sighs> Why do I not? I had. Open a local file. Is that it? Did I save it out here? Oh, maybe, maybe. There we go. Black widows are good. You have to use a salt pew pew to get them. No, I use whatever is close by to squish them. Steve's countdowns. Okay, we are now four minutes past. So let's see. When we haven't had a new entry. Oh, that's the Y2K celebration. Whatever. Or the 10K two, two year celebration. Um. Sideways. Well, yeah, we do it. We've tried it both ways. It's not as comfortable this way. It's not as comfortable this way, but I can see better. So that's probably worth it. Um, when we haven't had a new entry in three seconds. Um, considering we have over 300 responses, but only 200 likes. I'm a little disappointed. Um, is that the correct one? Yeah, that's the correct one. So... Anyway, no new response in three seconds. Three, two. Oh, there was one. Three, two, one. Need to braid your beard. 
I can I can grab my beard and touch in the back of my neck now. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, half. We haven't had one in this whole time, so done. Oh, there was one. Three, two, one, done. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> Create a new spreadsheet. Ah. <sighs> Let's see, GJ, you got the very first one. Who got in there at the last second? Look past, Jerry. Who else got in there? Cervix Squishy. Oh, awesome. Okay. So here's my brother, Daryl. So here's my other brother, Daryl. Okay, let's do a number between. What what day is today? I have 14 days to get ready. 14 days of prep for Rocky Mountain. So let's go number between one and 14. Got here just in time, Tezza. We're not ready for that yet, Dougal. We do that after the drawing. Let's go nine. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Spin. You must be, I need every bit of 14 days. I should have just picked 14, but I'm going to be done in nine. Dat Mammoth, are you here? Dat Mammoth. Dat Mammoth, you better be here. Say something in chat. What's left for Rocky Mountain Road? Everything. Little bit everything. <laughs> that mammoth are you here you are here congratulations you are here you and jose will hear from me in the next couple of days because i haven't haven't contacted jose yet uh, paste this here that mammoth looks good awesome goes away just set it over here congratulations that moment if you're in the u.s or canada you get a coupon to the um, u.s or canada polymaker stores if you're outside then you get a form that has a long list to fill on it there's a bunch of them you never won that's perfect um where were we so let me read up on the comments you got an error. If you want to print something to see how it is, I would run the full input shaper regular way. We'll choose the best values, most likely using a same frequency. Generally, we would take Y's frequency from your Y shaper used. Okay. I'll need to rewatch the first couple hours. Okay, so we have gone through the process. I mean, uh, um, Rath is right here. Let's do, let's, do the calibration one more time. We're gonna pick something close and we're gonna print something. Hopefully it doesn't take very long. So I'm running Shaper Calibrate. It aired out apparently. I didn't see it. Oh shoot. It's gonna air out again because I didn't, I don't think I changed the, oh no, it did all. Okay, good. So we will get a value here. Two hours down, three to go. No. <laughs> See the 3D experiments? Shake and tune is going. Yep. It, it actually was going last week. So at the end of the five hours of streaming, it um it was going. We did run shake and tune. We did belt shaper. Let's see if I hear get a better hear at that 80-ish hertz. It's coming from. 80 to 90. Let's see if I can tell if it's the, I get a pretty good view of the belts.
I didn't hear anything. Up top. Nabiki, thanks for becoming a member. Gave up on Shaken Tune, tore my printer apart, chasing a graph. So that's what we, that's what Reth and folks refer to as chasing unicorns. We're doing a little bit of that with the idea that it's not, we're doing it to learn, not to necessarily chase perfection. I've literally spent hours in front of the printer running belt shaper, making adjustments. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't hear any vibrations in that, in that run. Let's see. I want to listen to this one. So I'm not actually going to open the X graph while it's running. Y. I want to be, I want to watch some of this stuff. And especially, I think I want to watch these. Well, it's doing Y, so it didn't actually show as much, but on the lower frequencies, I want to see the, the idlers here. Yeah. Haley says hi and good night. Good night, Haley. I think I'm going to change the 60 millimeter fans, though. They have a little bit of a rattle to them what are the best for skirt fans sleeve bearings or ball bearings can i still get a voron legacy serial play use something else than m4 as each year absolutely absolutely Something there at about 107. Always double ball bearings for longest life. Did I hear someone say legacy? There we go. Maglev's better than ball. I think there might be serialization of ERCFs now. I don't know. If ERCF does it, that's up to them. Maglev and my 2.4 and it vibrates. Okay, that's done. I didn't hear anything obvious in either of those runs, but it was pretty obvious on other ones. I don't know what's different. Okay, it is running. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna set some values and we're gonna do a print. So that does mean we're gonna go a little bit long, but that loose bed bolt. There we are. Are we good? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Everybody might need to, yeah, go live. Get to the live point. Awesome. OBS said disconnected. That's done that a couple of times now. Um, it did it while we were, um, it did it while we were prepping for the Milo stream. 
I thought it was something to do with um, with the video.ninja stuff we were doing, but this has happened a couple of times now. Yeah, you might have to change your video back to HD um, in the YouTube interface, but we should be back. Okay. Um, for X, we're going to run these recommended values based on what Reth has given me. So, um, I can't really read this, which means you can't really read this. Let's do this. Aha. Um, whoa, there we go. So the recommendation is 32.2 EI, but our vibrations are pretty high on all of these. And only 1900 excels. That's terrible. Why is this so terrible? I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I'm actually really sad. Um, the gifted subs did go through. Yep. Thank you, Pathetic Puma. It, it, it gave, it, in chat, it was assigning uh, memberships left and right. So assigning them X and Y. Um, I, it'll be interesting what I figure out on this, but we're not going to be able to have time to figure it out today. Um, but we're going to set this. Um, if we go to Y now, let's look at Y. It has to do with the 25 Hertz is what's causing it to give us a low recommendation. Um, let's give this one over here. Derek, thanks for your gifts and memberships. And I am going to do the same thing and open this bigger so we can see it. And we've got still vibrations are pretty high, but that same vibration is somewhat here, right? It's a little lower than 25. And to uninstall and reinstall the resonance calibration stuff. Stick with the stock version. It's a great printer. See it now. Chat wasn't updating for me. I had to close the stream and reload. Okay. Aren't aren't related with table printer base. Um, from what I hear, that doesn't have a huge impact. So now we've looked at this. I'm going to get some values here because we're going to we're going to go into the printer config. We're going to run EI on both, it looks like. And I think these are probably at the bottom of the bottom of the thing, but I'm going to look to see if I've got them up here. Um, I've got this here. Um, shaper type. Let's Let's see what I've got at the bottom of the file. Here we are. Oh, there. And well, I'm just going to edit these down here. Shaper type X is 32.2. 2 EI and Y. EI is 73.4. And I'm going to throw a damping. So how do you, how do you, oops, do the same thing here. I'm going to, is that damping underscore ratio equals, is that probably what it is? Ration, ration, set frequency to a hundred. A hundred on I was thinking it was some kind of above 400 C sorry set frequency to X frequency to a hundred okay and the damping ratio on X um, is that damping ratio X equals I'll have to look that up you, you spelled it ration too, so it's not just me. <laughs> I 
I know I'm editing the bottom of the file. You're not supposed to do that. Three, six. Okay, there we are. Did I get this right? Damping Rishon. It doesn't enter the bottom of the file. <laughs> input shaper, input shaper. If we weren't supposed to, we wouldn't be able to. I go all the way to the top of the file and I'm gonna, um, I don't know why that's there. So we are going to comment that out. This is most commonly used as support material for ABS. Are you talking H HDPE? Okay, so now we're gonna save and restart. And we're gonna slice, I'm rec being recommended a cube. Oh, and we need to heat this up. Printer not ready. There we go. Ooh. Okay, we are going to preheat this to ABS temps. And while it's doing that, I need to, I'm gonna move this over a bit and get a fresh, oops. and wipe down the bed. I wanna make sure this is gonna work. So since I'm gonna hopefully be printing on this, I'm gonna throw a little bit of, little bit of glue stick on there. And then, spread it out. Super thin film is what I use when I'm that is good. Okay, so that needs to preheat for a little bit. I'm going to set the Jesse model in memory of her. That would very much be a um, appropriate. The definitely heart goes out to David and printed solid. Loosen, loosen Jesse. But we're going to do the Voron cube. We are manually adjusting the X frequency to take care of the main peak on X, which is different than what Shaketune says. Okay. Which camera do you suggest for Trident? I don't have a good one. I've, I've got a wide angle version of this, um, but I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> had it for like two years and I haven't tried it yet. Um... Time to walk into work. See ya, see ya, projects. So this is going to heat up. We're not gonna let it soak for much time. And honestly, I don't even have a, I need to look at the extruder config because I have the, oh, and our, our max acceleration right here is 10,000 and um, recommended nine, but we're gonna change that in the slicer too. Um, we're not gonna go much over this, but I'm just gonna bump these up a bit. Okay. Um, bumping them up to allow it to go faster that thousand max XL before. <laughs> and then let's go down here to the um, extruder. Okay, so yes, this is um, the default-ish rotation distance. Is that for, is that correct for Galileo? Let's see, I've got a Galileo 2 in my Trident. Let's see what my, I'm printing, I'm printing all the parts. I'm actually printing all these parts for my Blue V2. Um, all the, um, this filament path parts. Did you see this? Did you see this, Dr. Dave? You see what I did with my... I'm really, I'm really happy with it. X 
Extruder, 47.15, 9 to 1, 200. Okay, I'm using the same thing. So we are going to go with it. Um, we are using a 0.6 nozzle here. So I'm going to have to adjust for that because I, you know, I have a 0.6 high flow. I have a 0.6 high flow obsidian in there. Got distracted by chat. Well, you can see it here. See? Look how smooth that is. Straight in, 45 degree angles into here. Um, I, I have unsafe changes. What did I say? What did I change? Sure, whatever. Um, oh, I did save the Excel. Um, I did save. Why didn't it ask me to... Why didn't it ask me to... Oh, it, I, I thought I said save. Let's just save and restart. It's okay. Is there a way to back up the printer history and main cell? There is. Um, and there's some documentation on it. You might want to go to the Moonraker documentation though, because that's a Moonraker function. Let's go back and get this preheat back going. Just so you had more flat corner brackets on there. <laughs> I'm about to remove those on the other V2. Bed heater is supposed to be edge to edge or smaller than bed size. A little smaller than bed size doesn't hurt. Edge to edge helps a little bit, but a lot of mine are not edge to edge. <laughs> oh, I spent so much time yesterday learning more about um, RepRap firmware sens sensorless homing. I, I learned a very fundamental um, thing about that that is going to help me explain it to other people um, and troubleshoot problems in the future. And the V value is critical. The V, the default I think is like V2000. And if you're familiar with RepRap firmware, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, look at the Moonraker docs. There's, I think there's a whole section there on backing up the database, the history database. Some of parts for the ERC FV2 right now. Might run out of filament though. And in order to get all of your, um, all the thumbnails and stuff, you might have to back up your, um, the 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 uh, G code files and put them back as well. Okay, we are preheated. Let us get the nozzle up to temperature and just something that will flow. Use end stops. <laughs> Nurgle rot. I with a lot of help um, because Jay pointed me to a document on the Team Gloomy sites that had an explanation for that V value. That that was the click. That was what, what made it happen. And I actually think that the V0 is wrong now. It may have worked, but I think it's wrong based on the values we put there. Um, we used V100, and that means that it switches over from um, stealth chop to spread cycle at 2.3 millimeters per second homing speed. Um, 40 V140 or V40 switches over at 117 millimeters per second homing speed. So that's what the, um, we should have had it somewhere like V70 is like 79 point something millimeters per second. There's a command you can put into RepRap firmware that um, tells you what speed each V value is uh, equal to. So I'm actually surprised based on that, that it even works on the V0. And I think it works in spite of that. Um, anyway, this is warmed up. We are going to extrude some plastic. So let's get some, let's get a, let's get a, Let's 
let's go ahead and nothing's there, so let's home. I'm having a lot of fun with RepRep Rep firmware. It is very different. It is very much a refer to the documentation um, setup. Be what did it do? Oh, the extruder's too high. <laughs> See that? Extruder temperature target of 220C is too high, lowering to 150C. It won't probe. There's that uh, extra G-code, um, uh, conditional G-code or whatever in the probe section that does this. And actually, um, Dave, you're firmly on team end stops. I actually should be on this printer because I'm breaking my rule. Um, I'm playing with sensorless homing, but I'm also targeting the Z end stop um, pin. So that I always say, don't run sensorless if you have to target something um, in X and Y in order to complete your homing routine. Because if ho sensorless homing false triggers, then you're screwed. Um, are we okay? Are we still going? I saw a little hiccup. Um, so I will be probably adding, um, I will probably be adding um, end stops to that printer build because of that. And I want to keep the, because I have the, the, um, there it goes. It got down to temperature. Now we're going to do a QGL. Um, oh, and I need to do a Z offset calibration. Uh, um, I don't want to tear up my Prusa sheet. I'm running the Duet scanning Z probe on that. So I, I want to keep the Z end stop pin. Uh, Adama, that's that's just for this or or probably any Z probe that you need or that. Um, sorry, I was reading her Horat's thing. Anything that you're probing with the nozzle, you should probe at a lower temperature. Some point where the filament will squish out of the way, but it's not going to burn your, your surface. It's working great on my Mark IV and SVL6. I like sensorless when it's appropriate and the appropriate scenarios is when you don't have to target a specific X, Y location in order to complete your homing process. Now, clicky is different. You have to target a dock. However, the macros won't let you, the way it's set up, it's a uh, whatever the normally closed, normally open setup, it won't home without having successfully grabbed the probe. So that is probably, I would say, okay, because then if it false triggers, you're just gonna fail a home. But if it false triggers and you have to target like the Z pin um, in a spec Voron build, then you're gonna crash into the bed wherever that ended up um, uh, at. Okay, that was nice and cool. That was a good quick QGL. Um, we need to go back home and I need to do probe calibrate. A real quick probe calibrate. Here, let's do here. Oh, see, my poor, my poor screen not working. Alan, are we gonna get the fine seeking focus crap? Um, need my patented Chris's basement nozzle height checker and probe calibrate. The IDM scanners can do the Z end stop. It's still recommended that you run a um, a different uh, a, a, a nozzle offset and stop. Okay, this is saying wow. This is saying we're at eight point three five, and we're not anywhere close. Something is going on with my config here. I'm 
glad I checked this because I would have been tearing, tearing that into the bed and probably bent something. And now we're at a point where it's actually, oh, nope, there it goes. I, I was, oops, a little too far. I'm gonna call it right there. Okay. Um, should stop the Moonraker server. I just did it on my forums. What? I'm trying to crash different parts of the gantry. Are there? Yeah. Being scanning Z probe in action. I have one, but doubt I'll get around to mounting it before you. I, I don't remember Nogarod. Are you gonna be at Rocky Mountain? I'm taking that printer to Rocky Mountain. Uh, let's accept this and. Z offset is there. Let's um, save config and restart. Anytime I do anything within that sphere, I usually stop clicker and moon record services. Save config and restart. And as soon as it comes back get our presets going again. I don't remember if this does a, I have to raise it just a second so it doesn't um, scratch against the bed. I don't remember if it does a Z lift before homing right now. And then home all. Nope, it doesn't. I'm glad I did that. <laughs> sort of don't know what to do with myself when not at the event. There are so much things, so much is gonna be going on there. No, go right. you, you'll be able to find a group or something to do. Okay, and then QGL. I just missed, why do you plan to go back to end stops on this printer? Not on this printer, this printer's fine. I'm gonna go back to end stops on my, um, here. Oops, let's go. Oh, that's terrible. That's even worse. Let's go here. <laughs> let me let me give you a little corner view of the and you would see the mess of my of my garage here but this is this is my original v2 so original v2 That is a, that is a, there we go. A Revo Roto with a Duet Roto tool head board with corner plates that are going away. Yeah. And I set it up with my, um, my little, doo -doo -doo -doo, my little Z umbilical. <laughs> anyway, where are we at? All right, go right there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Are the CMC parts worth the upgrade? I haven't I haven't actually ran it yet. I installed them all giving feedback to Chaotic Lab. I gave them a bunch of feedback. Um, there was a few things, fastener changes, a couple of things that were um, a little off about it that I thought, and they incorporated some of that into what the release was. And that was several months ago, so. And I think they just recently released that. They sent me the production version just a few days ago. So I'm gonna swap out some of the parts um, before the trip. And I'm gonna shorten the whole printer by 40 millimeters because it has it has the corner plates right now because I'm using cubes in the corners. This is my first Voron build. 
and um, the Z or the vertical corner extrusions are twisting. So I'm gonna cross drill holes and just turn them into blind joints, which is gonna shorten the printer by 40 millimeters and that'll be fine. This has had a good, a good pre-soak by this, at this point. Hey, Eric. <laughs> On that printer, I, it is, I, I did have, um, my end stops were set up on the XY joint pod, but I'll end up putting it on the X carriage and then on the A um, stepper mount. They are Masumi corner cubes. Yep. So the, the open builds corners aren't going to keep them from twisting either. The the Masumi ones are are better for that. They have uh, indent or indexing pieces but they're not good enough and I've tightened them down and they're not staying so I'm just gonna get rid of them and go into blind joints that guarantees as long as the ends are cut square that guarantees that it'll be square to the rest of the frame okay um now we need to now we need to extrude something the chat delay is like three minutes now. Are you live? It shouldn't be three minutes. You know what? Let me check something. I'm on ultra low latency. I'm gonna change back for next stream to low latency. YouTube actually was popping up recommending ultra low, but I normally stream it low so I'm going to, um, I'm going to change back. I'm going to change to low because that's what I normally do. And that's not a problem. Three second delay. It was 10. Okay. Um, that's there. It is QGL'd. Let's bump the speed, the temperature back up. Mine was about three minutes. To... Twelve seconds just now. Okay. We had a major hiccup, so something threw it off. Okay, that is there. Now we're gonna show it extruding the plastique. plastic and let's now watch that my um my my extrusion uh, uh direction is probably backwards find out going the right way it is going the right way okay good we should, should see plastic here in a second There it is. First plastic through that nozzle. <laughs> so let's go back to ABS temps and get away from that focus hunting camera. And then we are going to, while that's getting back to a stable temperature, we are going to slice something. So let me, um, let me open. I am going to import a config because I copied it from my other, um, I think here. Yeah, here we go. Who's the slicer config? Let's open that. Hunting, I said hunting. So here is my Prusa Slicer config. I want to check something else before I do that. Ah, oh, this is the error I was getting. This is the error I was getting last night. 
It shouldn't, why did it reload? Okay, I think I can just get rid of the login at the end. Yes, good. I gotta figure that out too. But um, what I wanted to check is that my bed mesh setup is correct. <sighs> bed mesh, adaptive margin. That's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that adaptive mesh was set up. Um, that's not a, that's not a fluid thing, Josh. That's a, that's a Moonraker thing that's coming up. Hey, John. Um, let me, okay. So I just wanted to make sure that adaptive mesh was set up and cause my config here has it in it. So let's add the cube. Voron cube. What was, what was your suggestions there, ref? Printing a cube with three bottom perimeters and zero top bottom will take about 27 to 30 minutes. So let's go through the settings here. Let's go through the print settings. It's native, native Clipper one is what I'm using. <laughs> Did I win? So we are doing three bottom perimeters and zero top three bottom perimeters and zero top bottom. What does that mean? Here, let's go. Three perimeters, zero, zero. This is what you're saying. And we are going to go, oh, this is a 0.6 nozzle. I'm still gonna go 0.2 layer height, but I need to change a bunch of other stuff. And we don't need 50% infill for this. Let's go, I don't know, 20. And speed here. So these are the speeds that I had set up. Hey, Fizzy's Tech. And what was the... We're gonna keep, I think we're just gonna keep all this okay. Just for now. We're just gonna get a print done. But I need to go 0.6. Ah. Oh, yeah, that works. Um revert that. <laughs> I think that's all we really need to do. Three bottom, three perimeter, zero top, zero infill. Okay. three and zero infill. Let's go platter and slice that baby. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Makes for an interesting print. You think that'll do? You think that'll go okay? We're just trying to get a quick print apparently saying it's 28 minutes I bet you it's like 20 at the most let's export this to not Phoenix let's go to stream v2 green and let's just export that right there all we care about are the parameters so now we can go back to the printer and Go to jobs and I got all kinds of stuff here. I don't know if there's anything I should be showing there or not. It's been long enough. I'm sure it's all fine. Nope, nope, nope. Um, hitting the wrong buttons. V2 green. Here we go. So I think all of it, oh, no, 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 that's not gonna work. Um, I need, I forgot to go over here and change this to 0.6. The rest of it's gonna be fine. Why don't we just set up a 
B to green. That way I can just send it straight there. B to green, local, test it. Yep, okay. Um, keep that. Yep, ladder, slice it and send it and upload and print. Let's see what this does. Oops. <laughs> I'll let that redo. <laughs> I left the I left the extrusion on there. <laughs> so it was it was meshing that first point really high. <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean that it's going to be I, I think I caught it. Let's find out. Um, I think I caught it. If it did a retry there, then I caught it. Um, yeah, it retried. Oops. It, it retried here when it did the mesh. So it was at 7.28 for for two, seven point, and then retried and then went down to a reasonable value. So I'm good. <laughs> um. You're right, it's not adapting, ad adaptive. Why not? Why didn't it do an adaptive? Well, I exported this from a, uh, here, output options. Um, Label objects is what you need. Uh, do you need those? This is exported from a from a profile that does it. This is exported from a profile that does do adaptive meshing. So did I, what I'm probably missing is, here, while it's doing that, let's find out. Um, we go to, what is that? Clipper screen stuff. Um, oh boy, I've got all kinds of pages here. Let's go to Clipper. I think I missed that part. If we go to the documentation and go to bed mesh, there is a here, adaptive meshes and bed mesh adaptive margin, but there's also a isn't there another part you have to put in? Printer config includes, ex oh, exclude objects is what it was, huh? And I probably missed that. Why do I have a whole other page here? Why does this keep doing this? I bet you I didn't put exclude objects in the printer config. Oh, and I'm not even showing this. <laughs> yeah, I don't have exclude objects in there and that's why. You need exclude objects in your printer config. Okay, back to here. Exclude object, yeah. Okay, I've got a power. I'm I'm ready to power this off if this grinds into the bed. Um, I feel like it might. feel like it might. It seems a little low.
It really seems low. Yeah, it's low. And I do not want to grind that Revo nozzle. I'd rather crash the pie than grind that nozzle. Let's get this powered back up. It's not good. I agree. But I that I don't have the screen here. I wasn't going to try to do it on with the mouse as quickly as I needed to do it. So let's let that get back up. <laughs> the nozzle's worth more than the than the bed. <laughs> I want to check a couple of things in the config. Let's let this get back up and running. The hot end fan is back on. Oh, that's why I'm in a private window here. I had done that troubleshooting stuff with this. That's why I'm, that's why I've got a whole nother set of windows. Okay, we are back up. Let me keep this warm. It is a good time to add exclude object to the config. You're absolutely right. That, and we need to look through here anyway, because I've, I've used this config over and over. So, just throw it up here. Isn't this just exclude object and that's it? Also in your Moonraker config, you need file manager enable object processing true. Let's save that. Close. This is all a mess. Um, oh, okay. True. Well, that's good. Save. Actually, let's save and restart. Then let's go back in here and poke through the relevant relevant section. So let's look at Z. What do we have here? Position min giveaway time. Oh, it's it. No, we do the two hour, Frank. We do it at the two hour mark. Polymaker pin is still there. And someone reminded me, but they reminded me too early unpin now <laughs> you reminded me too early <laughs> pre-process and parse your key code files and create the necessary object bounds yeah z virtual end stop i think all of that is okay the position end stop we set and i might have been a little jumpy based on how far off the um, Z calibrate is we're going to check it. We're going to go to go to Z zero and see what it looks like. Um, but I, I did want to check the, um, the mesh settings real quick. Probe is fine. Bed mesh. Okay. Let's check. Let's just save and restart just in case. Let's check that offset. I might've just been jumpy. Yeah, Steve, Steven, I just forgot to to get rid of the pin. Go back here, keep it warmed up. And let's 
Get rid of the, the ooze. And home it. Where are we at? We're at eight o'clock. We are at three hours, but we got to get this starting to print. What else do we have? Okay, and then QGL. We'll get this view instead. This is a much better view. You get a flashing screen and everything. Sir guy, so do I. Hopefully we'll have new friends at some point. Got to watch the print to the end. We still have too much of a, that 20 millimeters is too much Z lift. Why do you have low FPS on the camera? Um, it's only a Pi 3, and I don't know otherwise. It's always been low on this printer. No trigger probe after full. What? Oh, it is very, very off. <laughs> Let's go motors off and manually adjust this. When I, when I moved that out of the way, I really, really tweaked the, I really tweaked the gantry <laughs> beyond where it would normally be. Let's do it again. You have camera configured as adaptive MPEG or MPEG? I found I have higher FPS with straight MPEG. I have no idea. Where do I find that? Where do I find that? Is it in settings? Is there a camera? Cameras. Oops. Here, let's do this. Um, cameras. Full screen action and bed. Default. Here we are. Adaptive. So you say just MPEG? Just MPEG stream? And can I say there's no other options here for resolution? Aim, enable. Does that do anything? Do I have to restart for it to come back? It's not coming back. Broke it. I'm not going to restart. I'm in the middle of QGL. <laughs> That's okay. I'll play with that later. Oh, just an F5? Just a browser refresh. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, it, I'm uh, sorry. I browser refreshed, it didn't come back. Hmm, what's the message here? Are there updates? Is that what it's saying? Yeah. I'll screenshot my crow's nest config and configuration. Sounds good. Yeah, I got that raising quite a bit. Add 
to retry there. Uh, one more time. millimeters raise was a mistake. Maybe tries are normal. Um, this is still in the range. It's, that's only two. This is the third. Yeah, it just finished. It just finished. That was three of five. So that was four, four cycles. That's not unreasonable. Let's home all. I should switch this over to a Pi 4. I have one. Okay. I want to go, we're at Z 8.71. I want to go to Z zero. So I'm gonna go to G zero Z one. And that looks reasonable. That looks like one millimeter just eyeballing it. So I'm going to send it this time. I think I freaked out, honestly. Um, I was a little overcautious. Let's, now that we have the thing, it, the same G code should adaptive mesh. So let's try it. Yep, there it goes. Can we fix that clipper screen? Not tonight. Not tonight. If anybody wants to give me suggestions, on how to fix clipper screen for this, DM me. I do want to fix it. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I've got this whole thing where it's trying to get me to log in too. your Wi-Fi password and I'll sort it out. So when I went to, I did the update for Clipper screen and it didn't work. It still wouldn't come up. So then I went in and I removed the Clipper screen folder and I removed the Clipper screen config file and figured I would just re re download and rerun the install script. It failed at some package and the printer basically became unresponsive. The Pi became unresponsive at that point. Um, this also appears to me, maybe it was fine before, but appears to me in the normal spot where I would expect the um, nozzle to be for my start. Anyway, um, beyond that, I haven't been able to get it to, to do it. My next try is going to be just remove it again and try running or try rerunning the install script and see if it stops at the same spot. But I haven't wanted to mess with it because I got it to the point where at least the the printer is working. Yeah, I, I freaked out last time, it was fine. It was working before though. It was working before we did the OS upgrade. What's next on Tuesdays? I'd like to do my controller test station. 
that's going to be an interesting series because I don't necessarily know how it's going to go. It may be doing stuff live, figuring stuff out. Um, but it's something I really need to get going. So. <laughs> There's Kiao again. Oh, um, let's see. There we go. <laughs> now it's just blown out. Oh, that's a, that's not what I want. How's the LEDs on? It doesn't let me set the intensity. Okay. Oh, um, white equals 0.25. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to turn them off. Um, those LEDs off. You're not able to see it as well. There we go. It's printing. How's that different from your normal streams? <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, so interesting fact: this printer is not serial. So that was red, Josh, just because the default for the config apparently is set to red, but. This printer is not serial. What's that do? No, that didn't really help. I was playing around with the... There we go. After all these cool updates, do you actually get a better print quality? I don't know. This is the first print. Can you lower the camera to get a level view? Let's try. Shaky cam coming up. Get this right in here. Is, it's about as good as I can get. Let's get away from the seam. Is that better? Is the yellow blue Voron still your number one? It is the one that's working really well right now. There is no, well, there's all kinds of not tuning on this right now. Um, there's no, P, well, there is a PA value in there. It's probably not correct for the 0.6 nozzle. There's no extrusion multiplier. There's no extrusion multiplier. What is our fan? We're at part cooling at 60%. Hey, Phil. Quality of the printed parts on the still printer is very nice. Thank you. I'm pretty pleased. There's a few things I could that could be better. Can you SSH your Pi and type X org? Yeah. You're talking about this one? Are you are you trying to tr help me troubleshoot the the Pi screen thing here? Oh, what the Okay, let me get rid of that screen. 
Reminds me I forgot to retune PA when I put in a 0.5 nozzle. Where are we at? Um, you guys see that? Okay, we're good. You want me to just type um, X org, huh? Oops. Fatal server error. Server is already active for display zero. What's the current ranking of your fleet? a very very geeky joke aren't you only supposed to use pa with nylon filaments that is a geeky joke um yeah fatal server error. if the server is no longer running remove temp x0 lock and start again seems it is running or just not connecting to it wonder why That's not a dad joke. That's not even close to a dad joke. Oh yeah, PA needs tuning. <laughs> the the point six. So this is a Revo point six Obsidian High Flow. The biggest reason for running it on stream here is just to try it. Um, I'll put a 0.4 back in this one, but that 0.6 is going to end up getting used on the Phoenix here. Very pleasant color. Can you type it in the chat? What type what in the chat? Point of info I'm moving to doing all of our robot parts on 0.6 millimeter nozzles because of the additional strength. Yeah. Dark Zora, what what did you want me to type in the chat or do you want someone else to type in the chat? The error message. Oh, I'll here. Why don't we? We'll do it better. It's 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 printing. It's printing a cube. We can we can we can get a slight diversion for a few minutes. <laughs> That's what I got. Phoenix needs a 1.0. <laughs> There's two use cases for Phoenix, Josh, right? Running a 0.4 nozzle with just a lot of parts or running a bigger nozzle with a big volume of parts. I can't, this isn't gonna show up well in chat there, Dark Zorro. If I tried to paste this, this whole thing into into chat that would not show up well. So this is KVP proper purple, I think. It, no, it's not proper purple. This is the regular purple. I used proper purple on my um, on my uh, out uh, out zone. Um, um, I'm drawing a blank. The the '80s pastels color trident um, 
I need to find a replacement because I don't have more of that. I need a dark, good purple to, to print the parts for that in. You got the error message? Um, system control status clipper screen says. Part of me want to build a three, 200, 300 million tall Phoenix when it's released just for printing lots of parts. Like Polymaker purple, it's a nice purple. I want a darker purple. Um, hey Leo. Any inductees today? Nope. I want, a, I want a darker purple without uh, additive. I don't want a sparkle. I don't want anything like that. I want a, just a good darker purple. Does, is the um, plutonic purple? I might look at that then, because I like the fusion stuff. Ooh, Polymaker dark purple? Maybe I'll look at that too. I can get that quicker. I like fusion stuff. Um, but I, but I'm, I want to print my, um, spool holder, my spool holder set up for the, for that, um, Trident. Do you have a KVP promo code? I don't, I don't, I don't tend to order KVP anymore. Um, I would love for them to get interested in, in caring about the community again. Um, perception, my perception, um, they don't seem to mind that their filament is inconsistent. Um, and as soon as they start exhibiting and I, or are making it seem like they um, have an interest in that, then I would try them again. But right now I'm really not interested. Bet the Geomov with no glitter would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd give them a chance if they, if they decided they get different ownership, different management. They, they moved and it all just went downhill. So that's my perception experience. Word from friends who use a lot of their stuff that aren't happy with it anymore. So the Voron Delta is not a thing. I'll, I'll burst, I'll burst a few bubbles. Voron Delta is not a thing. Cookie Cad Unicorn is pretty sweet. Yeah, after they moved. That's they they had good line operators where they were. They that it was it showed they had good stuff. And it was probably all due to those line operators. And they didn't keep them after the move. I don't know what circumstances. Anyway, um, was there suggestions on what I did there? Um, um, on that, on that air. Cause I might've missed it. I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at fusion. I'm going to look at polymaker. I'm going to look at matter hackers and see which purple I like the best. I haven't used much matter hacker stuff. So your clipper screen issue and ins install the Pi four. <laughs> get better frame rate and a working clipper screen faster than debugging that air. Now, if I install a Pi 4, it's getting the same SD card. I'm just gonna move the SD card to a Pi 4. I, I am being stubborn with this install. I'm keeping this fluid install. Best thing I think of is something's up with the Clipper Screen Python environment when going to Buster. So, I, should it have recreated the Python environment if I deleted the Clipper Screen? There was no Clipper Screen dash env folder. Then you'll have to debug it. Yep. <laughs> My wife purchased some cheap PK ABS for her solid, her solid fork build, and it's printed very good. Nice. What you got in Moonraker comp file? This is what, what the shadow is this? 
66%. Moonraker Cop. Uh, I don't know. This thing has me something to do. do. Everything below this is pretty much update manager stuff. I would suggest to stick with the same SD card. Not suggest, the install sets certain stuff in the conf text file. I don't want to reload it. Sorry, my last print before bed. Have a great rest of the stream. See you, Dr. Dave. It, this is the way that I would reload it. So, and what I may end up doing then. If this is going to be, um, I'm not doing clipper screen. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I don't mind doing the little little checks. And, and if somebody, if this gets enough information for someone to DM me a magic fix, then I'm game. The way that I would reload this printer is going in and learning the fluid manual um, install process, which is documented. Um, I would go through and do that. And I would probably set it up on a whole new pie with a new SD card and then transfer all my history, all my database stuff over from this, um, instance to that one. And that I may do because it, it is this, 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 this instance, this install has, has been through a lot. Um, starting with Euclid and the, and it was, had nothing to do with Euclid at the time, but the, the troubleshooting process we went through there and then twice in this build series. So what is an FTEMS? I have no idea. So probably not. You might have some things to try for Clipper screen. You'll DM me. Thank you. We'll just let this go and then we'll probably call the call the stream. This cube looks pretty good. Needs some PA tuning. Oh yeah, for sure. Big time. This poor printer has the the poor pie on it has been through the ringer. Regular ASA Polymaker Purple is dark. Even if, I think it's probably a good idea, even if I do, um, I would like to get this back in a working state to say that we did it. We, we blew it up and we brought it back. Um, but I would like to convert to a Pi 4 on this printer, especially with the camera and stuff, um, which means that I would learn do the fresh install on a new SD card and then transfer data. Yeah, that'd be cool, Josh, if you send me that. That would be that would be helpful. Control. Yep, we do the giveaway at the two hour mark on these Tuesday streams. And we don't usually go three and a half hours. Um, we don't usually go five hours either. <laughs> I have not tried a Pi 5 yet, um, but there are still problems with that, right? Have the Pi 5 problems been sorted? Because I could throw the Pi 5 in, um, but not not if the the compatibility or drivers or whatever the problems were haven't been sorted out. Not the Pi's I pity. It's the SD cards. Really, every now and then they take out one. I have a Pi that failed on my V0, the gold V0, the Pi failed. I moved the SD card to another of the same model Pi and it worked just fine. See you, Josh. I've done the, um, the and it's all Moonraker, Obi-Wan. I've done the history database and all that stuff back up and restore and it's worked pretty well. So I'm not too worried about that part. I haven't done an upgrade as I've been 
Miloing. Is ABS your go-to filament? Absolutely. And honestly, I like printing with ABS more than ASA. Um, only because I don't have to dry it. <laughs> I, I, ASA prints just fine. It, it, it makes great parts, but I'm finding that I have to dry it. Now, interest, this is another good, good thing. Um, I have Sensibo controllers now in both garages. So I think I'm, I can get better, um, or at least I, I, I'm thinking they're probably better, humidity environment settings. So let's look to see what it says my humidity in here right now is. It is saying that my humidity in this garage is 50% right now. And 52% in the other garage. So I like ABS because I can just grab it off the shelf and I've never had an issue where I thought it needed to be dried. ASA always prints better for me if I dry it. See you, Fizzy's Tech. Have a good one. Robert, I am going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. There we go. We finished a print. We'll get a close up look at it here in a second. That's pretty high for Cali. I thought it was dry out there. I, I know that's what I was thinking, that it feels high here. What do you, what is yours, Bill? What do you have for um, humidity in your area? Do you know? Or what about you, John? I mean, you're in the, you're really in the, in the bay, so you're probably a little higher, right? It's G2E, yep. My humidity is 61% in LA, 47 in SoCal, but it's been raining. Yeah, it's been, let's see if this will come off. Oh, there we are. I thought the Pi 5 issues were all problems with Pi OS with bookworm. Might be. I lived there for five years and the summer's humid. Oh yeah, lots of lots of PA issues, and oh, oh. that that's not ringing. What you're seeing in the main part there, what we're looking for probably there's too much extrusion and PA issues to call ringing or not. I think got a good first layer. <laughs> I need to put I need to put a 0.4 nozzle on this and tune it like I tune my other stuff and see where it where it gets. This is this is way over extruded, I think. Way, eh? I wouldn't say way. Looking down at the only top layers I have in there, or at least what would maybe be. <laughs> 85% outside, 58% inside. Wow. Yeah. There is, there's lots more problems in a zero tuned. Where are we, what are we pointing at? Okay. With no tuning print. So I can't really dedu deduce anything from this. That's not ringing. That's some sort of VFA. I would love a tuning how to video. Inside doesn't look better, close up. Uh, I'm in Northeast Canada and my house is in the 30s most of the year, except for during summer and the rainy seasons. Been raining. <laughs> it does not look good, I agree. It is not a good print, but it printed and it works. And, and look at that beautiful filament path. Here. <laughs> Self changer build win. We are doing a black box tool changer. Did you have the big storm? No. No. So we didn't have any real. We've got some. Um, oh, uh, are you talking about a, last weekend? 
I am proud of the path. I wasn't really expecting it to work so well to come over here. And then I got the idea for this and I'm, I'm liking it. I'm going to, I've got, like I said, I've got the other one printed. It might be done. Is it done on the other printer? Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, that completed here. Look at this. So this is my, my gray, um, trident. The slicer predicted over five hours. Um, I'm always getting significantly less actual print time. So that's three and a half hours for those. So cool. I got parts over there that I can go install. Um, I modeled this, this spool holder um, yesterday. It took me about 30 minutes and it worked. So I'm pleased with it. Okay, um, Tuesday streams, I think we're gonna move to the test controller test station next, unless I think of something else. Um, Sunday, we are going to finish up the Rook. It's almost done. And after that, we're going to work on the black box on Sunday. So the weekend before Rocky Mountain, I think I'm going to do an unboxing of the black box. Not a lot of assembly, and it'll be a fairly short stream. Um, just, I'm expecting that I'll have a lot of things to do, um, leading up to leaving for Rocky Mountain. So, but we'll get that out of the way so we can dive into assembly as soon as I get back from Rocky Mountain. So, ah, <sighs> three and a half hours. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for everyone who stayed up and hung out. Thanks for the gifted memberships. Thanks, Polymaker, for the filament giveaway. Um, have a good rest of your week, and hopefully, we'll see you Sunday. So, take care, everyone. Enjoy the build. <laughs> Bye.